Hi, Misha here. And like I said in my last video, I apologize for being a little less frequently publishing. I just had a lot going on. But now let's talk about something we haven't done on the channel in a little while. A helicopter. And this might be one that uh, isn't very well known. And this is a model that just came into the country. This is the British RAF Bristol Type 192 Belvedere, specifically the HC Mark I, HC1. This is the only tandem rotor British aircraft to go into production, and one of the very few to be made outside of like Boeing and the whatnots. But it had a very short production run and an equally short uh, career, frankly. And this is a 172 scale diecast model. It's under the D'Agostini brand name, but it's the same pattern that we've seen before with like the Altea helicopters. And that's a good thing. Um, these are still relatively inexpensive. But are a step up from, say, a Merkham. They're kind of that middle middle area. It is die cast. The main body is all metal here and actually has some pretty good weight inside. The landing gear, some of the detailing, and the rotors are, of course, plastic. But they do spin. And I just like these stands because they're a little longer. A little more stable than some of your cheaper brands. So yeah, I was kind of excited to pick this up. I, I like helicopters, and uh, we don't get a lot of them in 172 scale diecast, especially the more obscure British choppers like this. So this dates back to the late 50s. Bristol had been working on the Type 173. That didn't go anywhere. Then they were working on the Type 191 for the Royal Navy. Well, that really didn't get too far either, but they did make three or four prototypes. So when they started to design the Type 192 for the RF, they started with the nearly complete airframes. This let them kind of leapfrog the process meaning they were actually able to take the prototype to the skies on July 5th, 1958, quite quickly. But it did mean that the helicopter had a lot of leftover features and things from its naval days that really made it less than ideal for the RAF. Regardless, the RAF selected it, and after the first three prototypes, they would build at least two more. And by 1960, it was pretty much ready to go into production, orders were placed, and the first RAF squadron equipped with these in 1961. And the second squadron would equip in 1962. And that would be it. Just two squadrons would fly these, and actually for a pretty brief time. The first squadron would actually retire theirs in 64 in favor of the newer Wessex, and the second would keep theirs until 1969. But regardless, what do we have here? Well, this is a cargo utility troop helicopter. It can carry up to 6,000 pounds internally or underslung. And it can carry up to 18 fully armed troops, or even more if they don't have all their equipment. Or in a medical role, it can carry up to 12 stretchers, plus attendants. It has a crew of three Although I believe it can actually operate with two. You essentially have pilot, co-pilot, and then the uh, the cargo chief, the the load master, if you will. Obviously, it is uh, has two different sets of rotors. They are linked together, where if one engine goes out, the other can take over and spin both. It's about 54 and a half feet long. And really for its type, it was pretty fast. It was capable of achieving nearly 140 miles per hour. And it could achieve an altitude of about 12,000 feet. 
the uh, kind of leftover aspects of when it was a naval aircraft. It had a fixed undercarriage. And kind of odd setup for the engines. They're both at the extremes, especially the rear here. Meaning there's no cargo door in the uh, in the back because your engine is there. That had to do with carrier operations. Instead, our cargo door is on our side here. And this tall undercarriage meant that it was four feet off the ground, meaning the soldiers got a good jump from the ramp. Now, the reason it was so tall when it was expected to be a naval helicopter they wanted to be able to say hang sensors uh, sonar or torpedoes or depth charges off the bottom which makes sense but for a land-based aircraft less so there is a crew hatch in the side here for the cockpit this little bulge pretty small door but it allowed entrance And that's really about all there is to say about it. It's, um, yeah, they only made 26, like I said, and it served from really just the 1960s. Now, the British did, oops, did use these. Luckily, these do move. <laughs> they uh, tried it out in Africa, the Middle East, the European theater. They even sent one squadron over to Singapore. They also would use these during the Malay Emergency And a few other minor little incidents. But the truth is, newer helicopters like the Chinook and the Wessex were just superior. But it does stand out in history for being the only tandem British helicopter. So there is that. Neat enough to have an inexpensive die-cast model here. And I like it. These uh, stands plug in with not one peg, but two, and they're two-piece, usually having the name and stuff on the bottom. As I said, this, um, this has some weight on it. It does kind of feel like a pickle or a banana, very cylindrical helicopter. Very much like others of its day and time. And don't expect corgi level or hobby le hobby master levels here of uh, niceness. But for what you pay, it's a good little representative piece. And in the world of 172 scale die cast helicopters... Frankly, we're kind of a beggars, can't be choosers situation. See, the propellers move. This is a little stiffer in the back, but it moves too. If you were to get one of these that had gear that would retract, they don't retract on this, uh, this series. For example, if you were to get... Um, I can't think of it. Most helicopters, yeah, the gears uh, are fixed. But if you were to get one, they did. They're fixed. It doesn't really matter on something like this, though. I don't know. It's just kind of that neat Vietnam era look. Even though I don't believe that Britain ever stationed these in Vietnam. And that was pretty much it. It wasn't exactly a runaway success for Bristol. They did try making a civilian version, the Type 192C. It could carry two dozen passengers. These were kind of well known for being quite fast for their size, but nevertheless, even though it was on the market, no takers. This was a turboshaft, by the way. It wasn't the old school piston type engine. But yeah, haven't had to talk about helicopters in a minute. This one seemed like an interesting one to do a small video plug on. So with that, let me know what you think. 
I think it's pretty cool that D'Agostini did these just for aviation historians because we just really don't get much outside of Chinooks when it comes to twin rotor aircraft like this. So yeah, appreciate you tuning in. As always, if you could, please like, share, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. This is Misha, and I'll catch you very soon next time.